Greetings, my name is Tommy the Keyblade Master and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing the latest chick flick from Disney, Cinderella. Yeah, I'm a straight guy, I went to see it. Mainly because I was curious to see if it was better than the last two live action remakes from classic tales that Disney has done. Um, I did not like Alice in Wonderland. Tim Burton tried to turn Alice in Wonderland into this Lord of the Rings style epic fantasy, and that just doesn't work with Alice in Wonderland. If you ever watched the classic movie and wondered why it's such episodic nonsense, it's because Disney really stuck to the book in that one. Sure, he traded a few things from Alice in Wonderland out to things from Alice Behind the Looking Glass, but they both happen inside a dream of a little girl. Hence their nonsense. To try to put sense to the nonsense that is Alice in Wonderland, you're still going to get a movie that makes no sense. And the fact that it's trying to makes it worse. Then there was Maleficent. Now, Maleficent's a character that a lot of people enjoy. She's considered kind of the baddest of the Disney villains. She's been used all over the place outside of the Sleeping Beauty canon. She's been used in Kingdom Hearts and several other Disney stories as kind of this main bad guy as the Disney villainess that can unite all the other Disney villains basically is her role to go and try to flesh her out was a good idea I was like thinking they could make her a misunderstood villain or a misunderstood anti-hero and you know you have Angelina Jolene who does a magnificent performance as her and you could have a great movie what does Disney do oh no she was the hero all the time and those uh, three fairies that were with her the whole time, well, they were lame brains, and King Stefan was really an evil tyrant, and I'm like, ugh. This is like uh, Wicked and Frozen if they made it and turned into some devious hell's bond. I did not like that movie. Uh, so anyways, I went into Cinderella, also knowing that this is the second time Disney has also told this story in less than a year. Last time was during the holiday season when they did Into the Woods. If you've never seen Into the Woods, um, let me tell you, yes, it retells the Cinderella story, but the tone is 180 degrees the other way. It's still, for the most part, a family movie, but it is very, very cynical and down-to-earth. Um, basically, in that one, all the classic fairy tales share basically the same tales, or same town. So basically, you see all these characters from this town go through their tales, go through their paces. They all wind up with happily ever afters in the first act. The second act follows what happens afterwards, and you learn that basically their lives went to hell afterwards. The prince cheats on um, Cinderella. Jack's mother gets killed. Red Riding Hood's mother gets stomped on by the giantess that Jack killed, who is now destroying the entire kingdom. And although Disney took this out of their movie in the stage play, most of the other characters by the end of the movie get killed off in some way or another. So it's a somewhat dark film. It's not violent or gory, but it is definitely dark, which is in contrast to what I just saw. Anyways, yeah, Cinderella is better than the other two that I mentioned, mainly because they don't try to rewrite the basic story. Now, some of them will be going, Sexist, 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 she needs the man! And I'm like, you're missing the point of the story. The story that the, that the Brothers Grimm were trying to get across was that hard work, optimism will eventually lead to something good down the road. It might not always necessarily be right in front of you, but it will eventually lead to something good. Karma will eventually work things out for you if you keep on working hard, even if the jobs are dirty. I can understand in the original 1950 version, the prince didn't do much. Princess in the classic Disney movies didn't do much, Mainly because I hear it's hard to animate a male figure, especially back in those days. So Disney didn't really bother trying unless they could make that male figure cartoonish. 
Hence why Peter Pan kind of worked Captain Hook and Peter Pan are slightly more cartoonish than, you know, you see the characters in Snow White or Cinderella. But anyways, back to the point. The movie still has that in it, and they try to do a step further and flesh things out. And for the most part, the fleshing out of the side characters works. It's what I like most about this movie. You start off, you see Ella's mother, and you see how she died and the effect that it had on her. And then, and this is where the movie does make a mistake. They needed to have three versions of Ella as a kid. Instead, they jump to her almost as an adult when her father asks permission to take care of the Lady Tremaine because she just has gotten widowed and has daughters of her own and wants to bring them in because he thinks that he can make the whole group happy and bring more liveliness to the home. And Ella agrees. We also see that father's relationship between her and Ella and how the Madame Tremaine gets jealous of it and how her father unexpectedly passes away and what that does to the home. And I kind of like that. And the, then the fact that the Lady Tremaine doesn't automatically become this wicked witch, but rather it's kind of slowly uh, starting off with chores to keep Ella busy to keep her out of grief and then you know before you know it she's sleeping next to cinders and doing hard work in the attic and all that they also fleshed out the princes and the king's relationship in the disney movie the king and the duke were comic reliefs here they're much very more serious in tone and the disney movie you do mention that the king is kind of in bad health but it's kind of a joke Watch your blood pressure, sire, as he's running around trying to kill the Duke in the 1950s version. Here, the king is actually about to pass away. He's really at death's door. You do see it in his performance. And he's worried about the prince. The prince also has some lines and some scenes by himself in this. And it's an actually pretty good role. It's still a short romance relationship. But it's far from, uh, they spent a few hours and they're ready for a lifetime together after no lines of dialogue. <laughs> so it is a huge step up. Um, my main complaint about it, though, and it's got to come up, it would be the character of Ella, though. And this is where the Nostalgia Critic, and or Doug Walker, I should say, he wasn't in his character, but Doug Walker, the Nostalgia Critic, and his brother Rob kind of really beat the movie up and for good reason i have the same complaint i didn't really like her she's way too sweet way too naive they're trying to make this movie a little bit more serious a little bit more down to earth and you got a character that's a complete airhead in the 50s movie had a woman that was a little bit smarter and she went out of her way to talk to mice and the mice talked back you can understand the talking to the mice part, but when they start talking back, you're crazy, girl. But she had more sense than this one that we have here. And, you know, we also never really see her get too dirty. That was also one of Doug Walker's biggest complaints, and I'll tell you why I think they did that in the movie. But she's basically just this really super sweet, and that's about the one part I didn't like about in the movie. You know, this is a chick flick, but they don't give much for the guys outside of a few scenes with the prince, which offer a little bit of levity, but that's far and few between. They don't give much to the guys, except for one thing, and this is why that dress never got dirty. Everything Ella wears is cut off from the top to show her cleavage and has more support than a Wall Street bank that's on a government bailout. And every scene that Ella's center stage, every frame she's like center screen, the camera is just a little bit above her, if you get my mean, and pointed down. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's just what every man wants who's watching it in a movie theater of a six-year-old Disney is an erection. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> You know, and that's like the only thing they could get to the guys. You know, this isn't the Princess Bride where they could uh, write a few good lines for Indigo Montoya and have a sword fight. 
in the middle to keep us entertained. No, they just had to go <laughs> with, with uh, as much smut as you could put in a little girl's film. <laughs> it's kind of nuts. But, you know, I did enjoy some of the changes. I just kind of wish that we could have the Cinderella from the 1950s um, movie in with this one and then, you know, do some of the other stuff to help flesh out the characters. Fleshing out Madame Tremaine isn't a bad thing. Fleshing out how they got into the situation isn't a bad thing. And giving the prince something to do, definitely not a bad thing. The main problem with this movie just happens to be that the main character isn't well written. If you can get past that, or if you're someone who just likes sugary, sweet, movies and girly things I'm not one of those but if you are and there are some people who are most of them are women but if you are you're going to enjoy this I like I said I didn't think my money was totally wasted on it it's not the worst movie I've seen I put it leagues better than like I said the last two live action um, Disney movies that were based off of animated movies but it does make me kind of question Disney's logic here why does Disney feel like that these stories need to be retold in live action? My thought is animation offers more quality, especially to the fairy tale, than the live action does. And I don't quite understand this need to try to retell them. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. If they can get some better ideas than what was told in the animated movies, we'll have some that are better. I guess it's Cinderella's League better than Maleficent. It's League's better than Alice in Wonderland. But we're not quite there yet. It's a chick flick that's going to appeal mostly to chicks. It has very little for the guys outside of some major cleavage. Um, but it's, like I said, it's not terrible. Um, I didn't feel like I wasted the price of a mission on this one. But at the same time, it's not one that I'm going to rush out and buy on Blu-ray either. Anyways, that's it for this movie review. Tommy the Keyblade Master signing out. And if you'd like to see my game reviews and my Let's Plays, uh, feel free to click on subscribe.